Are you a farmhouse decor fanatic like I am? Then you've definitely come to the right place. Hi guys, my name's Melissa. Welcome to All Things Crafty, where I love to bring you guys DIYs and hauls every single week. So today I have some Michaels wood blank DIYs for you. I would love for you to stick around, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, because I have an Amazon farmhouse haul coming out at the end of the week. I'm gonna show you guys what I do with them so you don't wanna miss it. With all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at these signs. They're only um, like $7.50 because they're 50% off. So I'm going to pick one up and let's get it into the craft room. First things first, I take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain. Now this is just like the stain that I make on my own, like paint and water. It dries really quickly and it's water-based. So I take a paintbrush and I just spread that out as evenly as possible. And then I take one of these little rags. I believe they're called like stain rags or paint rags. Don't quote me. But I go ahead and I remove the excess. I then take that same exact paintbrush and I'm a lazy crafter sometimes, you guys. So... I just kind of poured my stain right on my brush to do the edges and I very carefully go around making sure that the edges are um, covered. Next I go in with my Waverly white chalk paint and I go in and paint that design. Now this is a little tricky to paint just because of that design. You have to kind of make sure that you're getting into every crack and crevice or else it won't look right. So I just took my time. This really did not take long. When I first started this, I was a little nervous that I'd be here all day, but surprisingly this went pretty quickly and I did only have to put one coat on this design. Next I go in with my large chip brush and that same white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around that middle circle and then I also dry brush in the middle. Now as I always tell you guys, dry brushing is optional. I personally like it on my decor, but if you don't like that look, you can totally keep that out. Anything I bring to you guys is just for inspiration. This is stuff that I'm creating for my home most of the time, unless I'm specifically doing a theme DIY for you guys. This is decor that I'm making for my home, so I make it to my heart's desire, and I encourage you to do the same thing for your own home decor. Next, I go in with a tiny chip brush that all you guys sold out and I can't find anywhere. That's okay. Um, I just dry brush some of that stain right around that designed part. Now, last week I had mentioned that I bought the kit to create my own stencils at home. I'm not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, you guys. I wanted to try it out so that I could compare the um, techniques for you guys. But in this video, I do just test this out. I was itching to try it. I will tell you guys it was much easier than I anticipated. Um, but subscribe if you guys want to see a comparison video on all the different ways to create your own stencils or basically kind of just comparing and contrast comparing and contrasting all the different um, stencil mediums. You can make your own, you can buy them, etc., etc. So again, like I said, this was really super easy. All you really have to do is print it out on this special paper they give you. Um, you have to make sure your design is really, really dark. Then you're just going to layer it and lay it under a UV black light. You turn your light on, and then you essentially just wash it out and you're left with your transfer. Now, it sounds like, you know, that was really quick, which it did take a little bit of time, which was to be expected. It was my first time and I'm, I'm learning. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited to share um, a video about it with you guys. So let me know again if that's something you're interested in. So anyway, I created that gorgeous little chicken. I transferred that on with my white chalk paste. I then went in with my Chalk Couture Farmhouse transfer. Now I was going to create 
another farmhouse word with my new kit but you guys i just didn't have time so i just grabbed the chalk couture it's quick it's easy um and it was right there and then I, my camera keeps shutting off but i did stencil on that local and fresh from a dollar tree flexible stencil with some white waverly chalk paint and then obviously i glue some greenery down some lamb's ear and a bow at the bottom and that was it you guys i absolutely love the way that this sign turned out it goes so well with all my kitchen decor and all my farmhouse decor and i'm so excited to be getting back into farmhouse decor if you guys are tired of farmhouse decor let me know or if you're as excited as me let me know as well Okay guys, moving on to project number two. Now this piece was only $3.50, which once again I felt was a good deal. I loved the little leather detail on it, and this was pretty good size as well, and it's also pretty thick. So anyway, I start out by giving it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was good and dry, I went in with my mini chip brush and some of that oak gel stain, and I just dry brush all the way around the edges once again, as well as the entire piece. Once again, if dry brushing is not your forte, then you can totally leave it out. I went on my computer and I designed this file. Now I did take out the Norman and I will leave the free printable in the description box below for you guys as well as in the pinned comment. That way all you'll have to do is just open this up and then print your last name. Um, and I'll also leave the name of the font that I used down there as well. So I just take a piece of graphite paper and my pencil, I trace that on, and then I use my black paint pen to go over the wording that I traced on. Now I felt this needed a little bit of color, so I went into my stash and found these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree, and I thought that they were perfect. So all I did was just cut out a few of, you know, the pieces, and before I went and I rubbed them down to transfer them, because essentially what you're doing is um, you're trying to get that adhesive warmed up pretty much to stick to your surface. So before I do that, I want to make sure that I like the place and once I'm satisfied with the placement then I go ahead and just use whatever random object that I had nearby to rub these down and transfer them on. I felt that that was not quite enough so I did go in with some more just to make that look a little bit more full. As you can see here, I'm using my Dollar Tree picker that I hauled last week. If you guys have not seen that Dollar Tree haul, I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner. And I compared the Cricut one just side by side. And you guys, there's literally no difference. I cannot tell a difference between the Cricut picker and the Dollar Tree one. So I did just want to mention that. But once I was done, then it's time to embellish this and finish this sign off. So I took some jute at the top. I I tied it in the back and then I wrapped it around several times, cut it in the back and then glued that to another piece of the jute. My thinking was if I wanted to do something on the back of this project, I could just easily take that jute off. And then once again, my stupid camera cut off, but I did end up taking that faux leather from Dollar Tree. I glued it at the bottom of my sign stuck some push pins on either side, and then I rubbed them down with my rub and buff. I did my push pins as well as the nail or grommet at the top of the leather hanger of this sign. And that was it, you guys. I love it so much. It goes with all my decor. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think.
Okay, guys, now this was one of the more pricey buys, but I just loved the way that this looked. It looked antique and vintage to me. I don't know how to explain it, but I just had to have it when I saw it. It was $24.99 originally, 50% off. Um, and then I bought the greenery. The greenery was a little pricey as well, but it wasn't too bad. I believe the greenery came out to be like $4 per bunch. Six dollars per bunch four or six dollars per bunch i'll try to find the receipt for you guys and leave it somewhere in the pin comment i'm not sure but anyway don't quote me i grabbed two of the greenery as well as this tin now i don't mind spending money on good quality items look how amazing this tin is and look how amazing this greenery is i'm not really too worried about spending money on good products so anyway you guys this just needed a little zhuzhing all i did was glue some buffalo check ribbon at the bottom i then wrapped some jute around the buffalo check i made a triple jute bow glued that to the right hand corner put my greenery in, fluffed it up, and that was it, you guys. This literally took me about 10 minutes to do, and I absolutely love the transformation, and it matches the rest of my decor perfectly. Oh shoot you guys look it's the rectangle one I almost just left and then I looked around the corner and they had the rectangle one just like the circle one so let's pick it up and see what we can come up with starting off I take that same Dixie Belle paint that we originally stained the round sign in the middle with so it's the voodoo stain it's just like um, paint and water it's water based so it's really easy to spread and it dries really quickly so I just carefully spread that out all the way around those edges and then once that was done so basically we are reversing the signs so for the rectangle we're going to do white on white with the brown um, interior and then for the round one we did the brown on brown with the white interior Once again, you know the drill, I take that same stain and my mini chip brush and I dry brush all the way around the white in the middle of the white as well as I take my white Waverly chalk paint and dry brush on the interior of this sign. Next, I take these galvanized animals from Dollar Tree. They are the farm animals, the chicken, the cow, and the pig. And I just start by taking off the hangers. And then for the chicken, I needed him reversed. So I did take his sticker off, but the other ones, we're gonna be gluing them down with the sticker to the back. So I didn't worry about that. But if that is a pet peeve of yours, then you can certainly take that off. And once I was satisfied with the placement of my animals, then and I just use some hot glue to glue them down. Next, I go in with that same stain, same chip brush, and I wanted these to kind of look rusted on the edges, which I'm not really sure if it turned out looking that way. You guys can let me know what you think, um, but I did just dry brush all the way around the animals, and then I felt that it was missing something, and I, wasn't, I honestly... <laughs> And I honestly was not too sure like what to put on here. So I just kind of looked around and I did have these chalk couture words, farm fresh and the eat local. It's all one transfer. It came in one of my monthly club couture subscriptions. Um, so originally I was just going to do that farm fresh, eat local, boom, done. And then once I was looking at it, I was like, oh, I still feel like it's missing something. So this transfer had a barn in it. So I did transfer that on to the top. Now I know it cut off, but I, I thought it kind of looked cool. I don't know, you guys. Then I kept, I kept going back and forth. Should I color in the sides of the barn? Should I not? I don't know. 
<laughs> so anyway, I decided not to. And then last but not least, I took that little greenery. I transferred that on down at the bottom. And that was it, you guys. I am pretty pleased with the way it turned out. I still can't decide if I should have painted the sides of the barn in. So once again, I know you guys will let me know down in the comments below. Okay guys, last but not least, this is the bonus DIY because obviously this is not a wood blank DIY, but I picked up these little um, embellishments for a dollhouse. I wasn't really too sure, but I loved the arch windows and the little word, and they were only 99 cents, so I just picked it up and was going to put it in my stash, and then I realized that I could make a beaded garland with it. So I take out the arches and I glue them um, back side to back side. That way, no matter which side of this you saw, it still was finished. And I used my gel super glue um, to do that, which I got that trick from my friend over at Liz Moore Decal and Decor. So if you have not checked out her channel, go check her out. She swears by this glue and now I can see why because it literally held in like two seconds. I then take out 24 wooden beads and I take eight and eight and eight. I leave eight of them natural and then stain the other two sets with some, or I should say spray painted with some white Waverly chalk or white chalk paint spray paint and some black spray paint. Once they were completely done, then I just alternated the colors, strung them on my white jute, and then I tied on that little arch window to the end of one of the sides. I cut that off. Now we're gonna make a tassel. I'm sorry that this is out of frame, you guys. You'll see here in a minute. Um, after I tied this off and cut it off, then I take some natural colored jute and I wrap it around my hand 25 times. Once I was done wrapping it around my hand, then I pull it off of my hand. Now originally I had added this to my beaded garland without that buffalo check ribbon mixed in, but I felt that it was a little plain and I wanted to tie it in with all my other pieces. So all I did was take a very thin piece of buffalo check ribbon, I cut it in half and added that to my jute, ran like one on the bottom, one on the top, and then tied that off at the top. And then I strung the end of my beaded garland through that top loop Loop, making sure to tie this very tightly against the beads and double knot it and that was it you guys beaded garland is so fun and easy to make let me know what you guys think of this beaded garland and that was it for this video you guys I had so much fun making all these projects Dollar Tree is not the end all be all you guys um, and I encourage you to look elsewhere for really really nice wood blank um, pieces at an affordable price. So if you guys enjoyed this video, my big goal is to get to 100k subscribers by the time I have my new baby boy in October. Um, it's coming up quickly, you guys, like very quickly. I can't believe that it is almost July already and we'll be getting into fall DIYs here soon. I also wanted to thank you guys so much for 75,000 subscribers. That is insane to me. I feel so incredibly blessed and grateful to have you guys all here and I know together by October we can get to 100k all you have to do is share this video out hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already comment in the comment section and that's it you guys it really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a little bit more so with all that being said I know that was long-winded and if nobody has told you today you guys are absolutely amazing gorgeous worthy I want you guys to know you literally can do anything you set your mind to you just have to believe in yourself to do it and just know that I believe in you and I know that you can so with all that being said I love you guys so much don't forget to subscribe for my Amazon farmhouse haul at the end of the week and I love you guys so much I'll catch you in the next one bye
Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on your way out. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.